everyone. Welcome to this edition of the Connected Families podcast. We are in a five-part series called The Magnet Says It All. I'm Stacey Bellward, and we're so glad that you're joining us. Today is the third in this series by co-founders Jim and Lynn Jackson, explaining the core framework of Connected Families teaching as captured on a refrigerator magnet. Today's principle from the framework is CONNECT. And you'll learn more about how to make sure your kids know you love them no matter what, and you also enjoy them. We love talking about this principle of connect. It's our middle name, right? Or it's our first name, Connected Families. That's right, right. (laughs) Last week we talked about foundation, what's going on in us, strengthening our spiritual and relational health and anchoring ourselves in Jesus so that we can then come to our kids and connect well. And that's our topic for today. Next week we'll be talking about how to coach our kids and values and skills and all the things they need for life. And then our final session will be how to correct them wisely towards really taking responsibility for their actions and ultimately their life. I'm glad that you introduced those next two topics because I had a dad that I'm reminded of as we talk about connection who called one time asking for help and he was working hard to coach his son and to correct his son because that son was having a hard time getting out of bed and getting on the bus each morning and getting to school on time and then he would inevitably miss the bus and then what and then all the different problems <laughs> Spirals ensued. Spirals out of control just, yeah, from there. It went fast and he tried all the different things that he'd heard and I asked him as he talked to me I said, so what do you do to connect with him in the morning? And he said, well, we're all busy. We got stuff going on. We, I've got stuff going on. His mom's got stuff going on. We're, we're on the move. And I said, well, what would happen if you just took three minutes to connect with him and let him know that welcome to the day and you love him and you care about him and you believe in him and so on. And he's like, that seems too easy. And I said, well, maybe it is, but why don't you give it a shot? And so he did. And I got an email from him a week later. He didn't call me, which is always good news. (laughs) And I got this email saying this, I had this unbelievable thing happen where I would just get up. I would go into the room and for two or three minutes, I would just kind of bounce on the bed and let my boy know I loved him and welcome to the day and kind of be goofy gushy with him and he'd make faces and whatever and then I'd say okay buddy now I believe you can get up and on your own and let me know if you need any help and then he left the room and then the next thing he knows his son is ready for the bus and gets on the bus (laughs) on time and it's all good and he said I can't believe that just by connecting everything went so different my morning was so much easier his morning was so much easier and efficient Mm -hmm. now I don't want to hold out what we're going to talk about today as like this put your quarter in and you get that little Snickers bar of good behavior but it is evidence (laughs) isn't it about what happens inside of people really of Mm -hmm. all ages when we feel cared about when we Mm -hmm. feel loved when we feel valued rather than just like we're somebody's bullet list of agenda for the day right so often as parents we know all the things that have to get done and So we start our engagement with our child by downloading our angst. Mm -hmm. And then we wonder why our kids resist us and are defiant to us. And then we blame them for, oh, they're just so disobedient when it's like, wow, I just like overwhelmed my child with, you know, negative attitudes and anxiety and commands and all this stuff. And I overwhelmed them. And in the context of our work, we've hardly ever heard a parent in 20 plus years of doing this kind of thing say, I really don't love my kid. Right. The parents that we engage with anyway are parents who love their kids, which I think we all do. But the question, if we love our kids, is how do they know it and how do they interpret it? And so we ask this question as it relates to connection, which is a key question. It's not, do your kids know you love them? Because most kids will say yes. I know my parents love me, but they just don't like me very much. Mm -hmm. And we've heard that answer a lot of times. And the question is, how do we fight through that and go, gosh, how do we convey to our children at some level that we enjoy them, we love them, they're a precious part of our lives? Yeah, so think through, how would your children respond to the question, do your parents enjoy you? And do your parents love you when you're not behaving very well? Mm. And those are two really key questions to consider. How would my child answer that? And you can even ask them. Yeah. And we've had parents do that and have some really important insights from that. very surprising (laughs) answers. Parents assume, we assume that our love is landing on our kids when in fact we've learned over time that when you interview kids, they'll say, well, my parents love me when I do this, but they don't love me when I do that. Right. Which really is not love. That's about conditional acceptance of some kind. Yeah. Love truly, if it's going to be received and understood as love, is unconditional. And we all, if we think about our relationship with God, we all need to know at our worst, we are loved no matter what. Mm -hmm. Not just tolerated, but loved and valued. And we also need to know that we're enjoyed and that God 
delights in us and enjoys us. And just the other day when I was out in the woods and thinking, oh, this is so wonderful. And the words of a friend came back. It's like God loves to watch us enjoy his creation. And it's like, oh, I'm being mm. delighted in right now. Mm -hmm. You know, and do we have that sense for us as children of God? <laughs> and then do we, you know, portray that to our kids? Yeah, and it reminds me of some verses in Zephaniah 317 that talks about the Lord's <laughs> delight in us. And the, the, I, I forget exactly how the words go now, but I mean, he rejoices, he over, rejoices you with over you with shouts, shouts of, of joy. joy. With, he dances over yep. you with shouts of joy. There you go. And I was like, well, I want my kids to know I love them no matter what. So, so I would make a routine from time to time of just going in and dancing and jumping and shouting, I love you so much. I'm dancing. And they'd I'm be waking up going, Dad, yeah, they, you're they, so they, bizarre. They, on the one hand, they weren't all that crazy about that, actually. But, <laughs> but on the other hand. Oh, they, they thought it they, was pretty funny. They knew that, I, you know, I cared enough to go to go do this really goofy thing that made me look goofy as a dad and express my love for them. Yep. And this is really after the heart of God's love for us. And even, you know, this Luke 117 is a prophecy about what John the Baptist is going to do. What's yep. he going to come to do? And ultimately, he's going to come to prepare the hearts of the people for the coming of the Lord. But what's the avenue through that? And I just think this is so amazing. If you were to just stop right now and say, okay, what was John the Baptist's job description to prepare the way for the Messiah? What would you answer? But I love what the answer is because it says, and he will come to turn the hearts of the fathers, and some translations say parents, to their children. To turn the hearts of parents mm -hmm. to their children? That's like his number one job description. Mm -hmm. And then it says, and to turn the disobedient to, and you think it's going to say obedience, right? That's what the Pharisees probably would have wanted. But it doesn't. It mm -hmm. says, and turn the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the yeah. Lord. Wow. God cares so much about our family relationships that the way for the Messiah was paved by hearts of parents and kids being connected and hearts of disobedient people beginning yep. to value God's wisdom. And we think that's like the most amazing summary of that essence of parenting that's probably in yeah. all of scriptures. Keep your hearts connected and focus on building wisdom. Yes, this heart position of I'm for you. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. I believe in you. I'm, I'm, and we use the word connected to you, the hearts of the parents to their children. And, you know, in today's fast pace and people coming and going and getting in cars and activities, and I mean, those are all good things. We're not saying don't do those things. And in fact, what we've observed quite profoundly over the years is that in the context of that, parents take their love for their kids for granted and they miss every day, all the time opportunities to make sure their kids know at the end of the day, this is not about whether you get the best grades or get the best position on the sports team or get the scholarship that we want you to get or make us proud on stage of some kind. It's about, I love you. I enjoy you no matter about all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. There's so many different ways that we can communicate this and it really helps to be intentional because in this fast pace and in all the frustration sometimes that builds up, you know, it's like the child that's the most difficult is really the one that needs our connection most. Yeah. But that's often the one that parents get so frustrated over that child's behavior that they just don't like them anymore. So it takes some real intentionality to begin to turn the momentum on that mm -hmm. and to just think in terms of what are the little ways that my affection lands on my child. Yeah. And I remember the day that we asked our kids, it's like, what do we do that helps you feel loved? And they had three very different answers that we couldn't have predicted. Predicted. Yep. But that's a super helpful question to ask your kids. What do I do that helps you to feel love? Because I want to do more of that. Yeah, one of the kids likes special <laughs> dates, another yep. one likes snuggling, and another liked mercy when he blew it. Yep. And by mercy, he didn't mean I get off the hook. It just meant a loving approach to my misbehavior. Yeah. And so a lot of times when we talk about connections, parents think, oh, I don't want to get down on the floor and play Legos or Barbies for half an hour. And then when I get done, I've put all this effort in, and then my child goes, what? We have to stop now? And then they have a meltdown, and yeah. then I get mad because they're ungrateful, and then the whole thing. So we try to help parents turn this momentum by just doing multiple quick little fly-by affection doses mm -hmm. during the day. You know, just where, how do you connect with your kids that it's quick and it's fun and they're not whining when you're done because you're just, and you might be walking walking by with a laundry basket or fixing dinner. And mm -hmm. what are those ways that you just communicate you are loved and enjoyed? And I remember the day I asked a coaching couple that I explained the principle and the mom kind of giggled and she goes, you know what I love to do? 
I like to just go over and smell their heads. <laughs> And I just thought it was so funny. I'm sure she was very sensory sensitive and smell was a big deal. But it's just, just motivation to keep them clean. Right, too, exactly. So that's good. <laughs> but it's it's just such a statement of I love the essence of who you are yeah. when you're doing nothing in particular. Yeah. And the dad said, yeah, I kind of point at them and wink and keep pointing until they wink and point back. Yeah, little things, just right? Little we can do things. so many yep. little things. As you're talking, I'm thinking about involvement that I had years ago with early childhood family education oh, yeah. folks in our school district. And they build in to the their curriculum, little opportunities throughout the day where they just pause and make sure the kids know they're loved, they're valued, they're cherished. And the one that I remember the most is one of the first things that they would do as the kids would gather and sit around the circle was this little song that they would do. You know, so say your name is whatever. Joshy. Joshy. <laughs> Joshy's here today. Joshy's here today. Yay, Joshy. And everybody would kind of do a little cheer and so on. And Joshy would just soak it up and then they'd move around to the next person and do everybody in the circle. And two things happen. One is, is that the kids whose turn hadn't happened yet couldn't wait for their turn. But the kids who'd had their turn loved to give the love to somebody else. They loved to pass it on. So what a dynamic, right? When we receive it, then it's a lot easier to give it away. And we see that dynamic in parenting too all the time. Yeah. And it's really helpful to, to just start to build those routines of connection in. And I remember there was one of our kids that when he'd come down the stairs, I'd go, oh, boy, it's my boy. And that was how he was greeted every morning. And then there was one day that I was immersed in my book and he sat and waited on the top step for a while and finally said, you didn't say, oh boy, it's my boy. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, that was so important to him. Yeah. So now you're not going to say that, you know, when your teenager come home from school, but maybe it's like, maybe you do a routine yeah. of, hey, bud, I fixed your snack. You know, if there's anything important you want to tell me, yeah. I'm open. Otherwise, if you think of it later, that's great too. Or even a, a grown up rendition of that. Hey, it's my boy. What's yeah. up? How you doing today? Yeah, right. And the teenager might not even respond, uh. but it, right? <laughs> But if they hear it, then they know that it's there. Yep. It's not our job to get it to work an outcome because then it's conditional. Right. It's our job to just keep finding little ways to express unconditional love. So parents have done this through notes in lunch boxes, through text messages, through Instagram posts, you know, just little things. But, you know, not in the context of Instagram posts. My son did this really cool thing that makes me proud, and here's a picture of it. It's just little stuff that has no strings attached, isn't connected to any performance or achievement. It's just for free. And that's a really important thing is to not have your self-worth tied to it. And this yeah. is where foundation feeds connection. It's like if our kids are kind of, if they sort of grunt at us and then we get all sullen and like, oh, you know, oh, and then we're kind of sullen the rest of the afternoon. If they sort of grunt at us, we can look at it. Well, that's an opportunity to show that my love is unconditional yeah. and it's not tied to their response and I can be okay. Yeah. And that speaks volume. So it's really an important opportunity of getting rejected is to be okay and still be loving towards our child. The sense of loving our kids, helping them to know they're valued and cared for, even in the context of some of their struggles. We love talking about this topic, but we're going to take a break right now. And when we come back after the break, we're going to talk about how to inject this sense of loving our kids, helping them to know they're valued and cared for, even in the context of some of their struggles. Hey everybody, are you wondering what the Connected Families Framework refrigerator magnet that Jim and Lynn are talking about actually looks like? Are you interested in using it to help you parent with peace and purpose? We'd love to get one in your hands. The magnet is only $5 and shipping is included. You'll find all the information in our show notes or go to our website, connectedfamilies.org. Many parents have found that the magnet has been a great quick reference that guides them through heated parenting moments. For me, it's been a valuable tool that I've used many times and has completely changed the way that I've shown up in hard parenting moments. It's really changed so much in my family. I just can't recommend it enough. Be sure to check out our show notes or go to connectedfamilies.org and get your framework magnet today. This idea of how to make sure our kids know not just that they're loved, but that they're enjoyed is such a stimulating conversation for parents. And we had a lot of fun with it. Mm -hmm. Yet there's a time when it can be really difficult. And that's 
actually our best opportunity to communicate unconditional love is when our kids are feeling least worthy of it, which is when they've misbehaved. They've done what they know they ought not do. Right. It's really about getting in our kids' shoes consciously. What is it like to be my child right now? What's their experience? What are they struggling with? Mm -hmm. Trying to step into a four-year-old brain or a 14-year-old brain and understanding all the stresses that our child has that are contributing to what's going on. Not so that we excuse it, but so that we can understand and help them navigate it. Well, and it sounds, as you say that, almost like you got to psychoanalyze your kids, but it really isn't that complicated, is it? It's like if I'm a four-year-old and I don't want to put my shoes on right now and I don't like how they feel and I don't want to leave the house right now and I go, I don't want to put on my shoes and I can't, I don't want... I hate my shoes and I don't want to go. The typical parenting response is not empathetic, is it? No, it's like, I know you're frustrated, but it's time to get in the car. So what would be an empathetic response to that that would help my brain settle down and develop some wisdom? So a parent could empathize by just simply going, it's hard to put on your shoes when you're right in the middle of your Legos and you don't want to stop playing and sometimes they don't always feel comfortable when you get them on and then you have to get out to the car. It's a bunch of stuff, isn't it? I get it. That's hard. Do you need a little extra help or can you do it all by yourself? I want to do it by myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which is not how it always ends no, up working. Not. The goal isn't to get it to work that way, but our best shot at having it go that direction is for a child to know they're joined, they're understood. Mm-hmm. What about the 12 year old who forgets their homework and gets in trouble for it. I got to school and I told my teacher I did it and they didn't believe me and they told me it was too bad that I didn't remember it and I'm going to lose my grade. Oh, I saw you working hard on that last night. And then to just not get credit for it, that's got to be frustrating. (sighs) Will you argue for me? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I don't think that would be helpful for you, but I sure can get how frustrating that is. Yeah. I think the typical parent would say, well, too bad, so sad. Like, Mm -hmm. And then that leaves the child feeling alone in their struggle rather right. than joined in their struggle. It yeah. doesn't mean you let them off the hook, and it doesn't mean they don't face the consequence, and it doesn't mean that you're going to take care of the problem for them, which a lot of parents tend to do these days. Right. Yeah, it helps to kind of think what it would be like to be receiving the kind of, quote, empathy that parents often give. You know, when empathy is something like, I know you're frustrated, but you got to get in the car. Imagine a spouse or co-parent comes home and says, sees the, the frustrated expression on your face after you've been with the kids all day and goes, well, I know you're frustrated, but seriously, who's the adult here? Come on, get it together. Mm, Thank you for your loving support, (laughs) little spouse of mine. (laughs) That would probably not help you just love on those little ones. Yeah. So Well, uh, you were talking about an example with a coaching client that Mm -hmm. we have permission to share. Uh, And I think it's just a beautiful example of how a parent was able to get to a place in her foundation, really, of empathizing with a child, have a heart inclined toward that child, and then offer empathy in the context of a challenge and see some pretty cool and even surprising outcomes. Yeah. So I just asked her, you know, she'd been working on empathy and I asked her how it was going and and she shared this awesome story. I think she can tell when it's genuine empathy versus let's just hurry this up. Like I can tell you're really frustrated. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Versus not. So like just now, honestly, last 30 minutes, there was a situation between the two of them and and she was getting angry. And I was like, honey, I want to understand please help me understand like I want to listen to you and she was starting to repeat it and then when she realized I was genuinely listening she started to cry like sad tears and like got below the anger and let the hurt and the sadness come out and I think I've only seen that like one or two other times so it ended up being really sweet and like I'm gonna cry talking about it because she was able to say like I feel tricked by Matthew because he does this and you think it's my fault and it's not my fault And he's tricking me. And so then I was able to say, like, I see that it was yours first. And I'm sorry that you feel tricked. Will you please forgive me? And then they ended up working it out. And she went and got some of her candy for him from upstairs in her room to share with him. Like, that's where the suckers came from. And so I was like. I didn't know this happened. Yeah, he was just at work. (laughs) And so I was like, yes, y'all can have candy that you're willing to share. And she asked for a hug and he wasn't ready yet. But like. That's never happened. Like, it's yeah. never gone that far before. Yeah, great. So wow. that was a huge win. A really fun thing about that story is this parent wasn't even expecting that kind of outcome. Mm -hmm. She just wanted to empathize with her child. And she told me later, she said, you know, when I watched the online course and I heard these parent testimonials about how things had changed so much in their home, I thought, yeah, that'll never be my house. And then she (laughs) goes, but it's becoming my house. (laughs) That's our home now. And it's just fun to see when parents really step into their kids' shoes. 
what a difference it yeah, can make. And, and that's even before getting to the sessions about accountability. Right. Mm -hmm. Like big changes happen when we as parents start to work on building our foundation and making sure we connect with our kids through the ebbs and the flows of everyday life so the kids know they're enjoyed, they're valued, they're understood. Tons of cool things start happening before we even talk about accountability. Right. And what I love about the story is that her daughter naturally took responsibility for herself and the conflict she had with her brother when her mom simply really empathized and mm. stepped into her shoes. Then you know, I'm capable of making this right with my brother, flowed out of empathy, Yeah. not even yeah. out of accountability. Super cool, yeah. super cool story. Now, we know because we've talked to so many parents over the years who will hear us talk about connection and they like the idea, but they come to us and they say, I want to do this, but it's so hard because I've never experienced it even myself. Nobody connected with me. We've had parents in the context of classrooms where we're teaching this literally begin to cry because they recognize nobody's connected with me yet. Well, how do parents who haven't experienced this just yet learn to be connected with and then do more connecting? Mm -hmm. And this is absolutely why we put foundation under connection because hmm. that's the answer to this. It's like going to our relationship with God and just beginning to reprogram. God delights in me. He loves me unconditionally. He's with me in my worst moments. And then as we ask him to begin to come alongside us in the power of the Holy Spirit and just create these little moments of connection, it's like we get to step into our child's shoes then mm -hmm. and receive it yeah. from the Father. And we have seen this happen to numerous parents who didn't get a lot of connection. Yeah. And as they trust God to help them connect with their child, it's almost like he reparents them. Yeah. And we've seen another way that people get sort of reparented like you're talking about, just in the context of the body of Christ. The, yep. the surrogate parents, who are the people in your church and your community of faith who you watch and you go, gosh, they seem to enjoy people. Like, well, go hang out with them a little bit more and allow them to enjoy you and see what that feels like. And even let them know what you're up to. It's like, I, I watch you and how you enjoy people. And I've never been enjoyed like that. I, I'd like to hang out in your Bible study or in your mm -hmm. group or go to your breakfast or spend time with you. And the body of Christ and the people in it and, the you know, these, these people who become surrogate friends, brothers, sisters, parents to connect with us and love us no matter what are a huge on-ramp to learning what that's like. And then the work becomes, how do I receive that? And then translate that into my relationships mm -hmm. with my kids. Yeah. When I talk about grace and truth for moms, I talk about getting in touch with what you need to be filled up, you know, through the body of Christ and finding a mentor, but giving them their job description. <laughs> like mm -hmm. when I call in distress, don't try to fix me. Just help me to remember how much I love my kids and how much God loves me yeah. or whatever it is that you need. You know, let this person know so that they can encourage you when the parenting gets really tough. Yeah. And if you're listening to this and you're a person who knows you want to enjoy others in the body of Christ, then you get to watch for those people in mm -hmm. your community, those young parents who maybe you recognize as having a hard time with connecting with their own kids and find ways to connect with them, mentor them, and at the very least, make sure they know they're loved no matter what. So that's all we have about that today. We could go on and on because love this topic, <laughs> but uh, we're going to come back next time and talk about the principle of coach. Ah, love that one too. That'll be fun. And we look forward to being with everybody then. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Connected Families podcast. We hope you got insight that you can use in your parenting today. We look forward to next time when Jim and Lynn talk about how to proactively draw kids away from misbehavior toward their God-given purposes by mentoring them in skills, wisdom, and faith. For more information about Connected Families or to pick up your own Connected Families Framework Magnet, visit ConnectedFamilies.org.